For this next example, I want to apply the idea of a weighted mean and a mean for a frequency distribution to something that is near and dear to every student's heart, namely grades for a course. Now we already showed that you could use the weighted mean formula to calculate GPA, but I want to go further than that and actually figure out my grade in a class. It's one of the astonishing things about teaching at a college or even when I was teaching in high school, so many students and faculty didn't know how to calculate a grade from a grading policy. And it's something to watch out for as you continue in your studies because sometimes faculty will figure it out wrong, students will figure it out wrong. It's something that's really valuable to know how to do and so many people don't know how to do it and that's because it doesn't actually show up in a regular algebra class. Right here, right now, this example this is how you figure it out. This is how to calculate your grade in a class. Okay, so let's look at the syllabus for our particular class. So this is, say, the syllabus for a statistics class. And it's probably very similar to the syllabus you have in whatever class you are working in. So suppose Larry wants to calculate his grade in this statistics class, and he's got this grading scale that was listed in the syllabus. So this is the standard grading scale for the math department at Jackson College, and this is the grading policy I have, say, for a particular section of statistics that the student is taking. He has received 88%, uh, 73%, and 74% on his exams. His online homework, that would be the My Math Lab homework, is 75.4%, and his in-class percentage is 90.6%, and his two project scores were 50 and 98. All right, now I have to tell you, this is actually a real student. I've changed the name to protect the innocent, but this is these are truly a student's scores from an in-class class I had many years ago. And just for the record, the projects are not each 10%, they're each 5% to make a total of 10%. Remember that these percentages should add up to 100%. If they didn't, then your instructor has done something majorly wrong, and feel free to talk to them about it, because it should not make anything more than, or less than 100%. All right, now the first thing you want to do is assume, well, they're going to assume that Larry gets a 78 on the final. Calculate his grade in the class. So what you want to do is you want to make a table of his outcomes and what each of the grade was for each of those items in the grading policy. So let me do that real quick. All right, so you can see here that I've listed all the categories that he could receive a grade for. And I've put Project 1 and Project 2 in there. And then I've got the grades that he received and their weights. Now, a couple of things. One, do you really write out this giant table? Yes, actually I do. Even when I'm teaching this in a face-to-face -face class, we will draw out this entire little table. We'll write it all out so you should too. Next, how do I decide which one's L1 and L2? Well, the weights are how much it's worth in the syllabus out of 100. So that should be the grading policy percentage, first of all. Second of all, why did I make them decimals? Well, I kind of didn't have to, but to make the numbers work out nice, it's nice if the decimals and percents, right, the percents are turned into decimals, so 15% is 0.15 and so on. And then I left these as whole numbers. Now, if you want, you can do decimals for both or whole numbers for both, but then you'll have to shift your decimal point at some point. So it's easier if you just do whole numbers for the grades and the weights are in decimals. Oop, except don't do that. All right, so now I want to calculate his grade. So you know where I'm going and so do I. I'm going to a calculator. So I'm going to go to Stat, I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to Clear, go up and press Clear, Enter, and clear out any old data I might have from either column one or column two. And then I'm going to type in the grades for student Larry. So I type them all in, and then I'm going to go over to L2 and I'm going to type in their weights. Now keep in mind, um, your instructor might have made a slight modification to these weights for your semesters, so just pay attention and use whatever was in your syllabus or whatever your instructor is um, telling you to use, although the vast majority of courses have a syllabus almost identical to this one. All right, so now I want to go to Stat, I want to go to Calculate, pick number one, one variable stats. Now remember your list, your data set is in L1, so that would be L1. But your frequency list, get your freak on, as my husband would say, is in L2. Right, get your frequency on. There's only two sections of the course that you use frequency list for. 
3.3, and then later 6.1, and that's it. The rest of the time, leave frequency list blank. But for this section in section 6.1, use the frequency list. Get your freak on, F-R-E-Q on, and then go for it. And I press enter. So when I run the calculation, you can see the grade. Now the grade would be the average, the mean, right? Because this is a weighted mean. And don't forget from chapters section 3.1, the X bar is your mean. So that means that his grade would be a 78.75, which means if you look at the grading scale up above, he would get a 2.5 because 78.75 is right in 2.5 land. All right, now suppose that he hasn't taken the final yet. <laughs> now this came from being an instructor, and I get a lot of, what's the highest grade I could get in the class? What's the lowest grade I could get in the class during the last week of class? So that is exactly where this example came from. If there's one course that you should never ask your instructor that, it is this class, because every statistics instructor should send you right back to this page and say, you can calculate this yourself. So you keep track of all your grades, and then you can put in hypothetical grades right here in this bottom spot. So if you have the highest grade possible, you would put in a 100%. And if you want the lowest grade possible, you put in a zero. So let's go to stat and go to edit. And we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna press up to kind of work my way down. So I'm gonna lose the 78. Oh, did you catch that? I pressed the delete key. Ah, that's where delete is useful if you want to delete one item. Now, just to be clear, if you go and try to press stat, calculate one variable right this second, it's going to give you an error message. And the reason is, see the dimension mismatch, or it might say DIM mismatch. What that means is one of your columns is longer than the other. So I'm just going to clear this out. Stat, edit. And you can see that L2 is longer than L1. That's not good. You've got to have scores for everything that you have a weight for. So let's put it in 100%. Let's say Larry got 100% on that final. Then I go to stat, calculate, one variable. Beautiful. And there he has a grade of 84.25. That would be, let's see, 84.25. Oh, just on the border. But that would be a three point because 80 or 85 is technically the start of 3.5. So he would get a two, uh, 3.0. All right, now what about the lowest grade in the class? We'll go back in and change that 100 to a zero, right? And see what happens. So go to stat, edit, go up, zero, enter, and then redo it. And that's a 59.25, which is a one or excuse me, a 0 0.5 in the class, which by the way is not passing. That's never a good sign. <laughs> so if you'd like to pass the class, uh, getting a zero on the final will not help. Hold on, I gotta type this up one second. So the moral of the story, one, always take your final. <laughs> right? If you do not take your final, then a student that was passing perfectly well, right? good solid two five three point borderline student failed the class entirely if they did not take the final All right first lesson second lesson the final can't really help you too much it can hurt you a lot right so it can raise you up about a 0.5 of a grade he's about a 2.5 student going into that final right he's kind of all over the place which is one of the reasons I chose the student because these grades were kind of up and down right but you can see that it's kind of all over, but if he goes in with a 2.5 and he gets the perfect grade, he'll raise him up to a 3.0, right? But if he doesn't take it at all, he's got a 0 0.5. Dun, dun, dun. So be super careful. You want to study, but as long as you do pretty much what you were doing before you came in, you should get mostly the grade you got coming out, right? Give or take about a half a grade. Now, then the other thing I get, so I get these a lot, you know, what's the highest grade I could get, what's the lowest grade I could get, right? But the other thing I get is, what's the minimum grade I need in order to receive a 3.0 in the course? Hmm. Okay, well again, it's the same table and that last pot is blank. Now there's a couple ways we could do this. We could do it kind of in an algebraic way. You can let X be that bottom score and you can actually use the equation and solve for x believe it or not 
Um, and that's perfectly fine, but we're not too into algebra in this class. So if you don't want to do it that way, you don't have to. What you can do is you can um, try different values for the final and get as close to 85% um, as possible, right? Overall, so 85% overall as possible. Okay, so just go back in. So we know that 100 will definitely get you um, over the 84.25 mark. But what about, I don't know, stat edit. What about if I make it 90? If I make it a 90%, will this student receive a 3.0? So looking back up at the scale, 81.75 is perfect, right? That's in there. Oh, so I didn't mean 85. I'm sorry. I meant 80 because he just wants to get a 3 point, not a 3 5. A 3 5 would have been impossible. The highest grade he could possibly receive is a 3 point. Okay, so let's go back in and stat, edit. Let's try 80 and see what happens. And you can see where we're going with this, right? You just keep trying in different ones and you want to get as close to and above. You don't want to be below 80, but you want to be um, as close to 80 as possible. Oh, see, 80 was no good. So to and above 80% overall as possible. All right, so I'm just going to keep trying different values until I find the right one. Give me one second. There it is, 83. So when I put in an 83 for the final exam, you can see it down there at the bottom, then I'm gonna to go to stat, calculate one variable. It came up exactly at 80. So then um, an 80%. So the bare minimum grade, I'm sorry, bare minimum grade on the final in order to receive a 3.0 would be equal to 83%. Right? That's the bare minimum. Anything lower than that and Larry will not receive a 3.0. So that's what he would need to shoot for to get a 3.0 in the class. There are other ways to do that. Like I said, you could you could do an algebra problem, an algebra problem, where you take x times 0.25 plus 98 times 0.05 plus 50 times 0.05 and so on and so on and so on and solve it for x if you so desire. I'll type up the formula real quick just so you can see it. But if you don't want to do it that way, you don't have to. There, if you want to do it algebraically, you take each value, multiply it by its weight. So 75.4, one second, there, now you can see it better. 75.4 times 0 0.1, 90.6 times 0 0.1, 88 times 0.15, and so on and so on and so on. And you get to the last one, which you don't know, and call it x. Then I used a calculator and I found what all of that was. I typed it all in very carefully and I got 59.25. And then from there you just subtract 59.25 from both sides and divide by 0.25 and you're going to get the same answer we got. So if you want to do it algebraically, that's how to do it. But again, it's not necessary. But I know some of you are more comfortable with algebra or you just want to see the algebra because you don't believe my trial and error method will work, but it will. But there you go if you want to do it by hand. Either way, you should be able to come up with the correct answer and you should never have to ask an instructor ever again, hey, what do I need to get on the final in order to get a 3.0 or whatever grade you're looking for in the class? Because you now know how to do it all on your own.